Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And I'd like to ask you, how familiar are you with the transitions of consciousness through history that have brought us to where we are today? How conscious are we and what are we conscious of? And there actually is a story about that that has come through ages in, in Hindu literature and teachings that are amazing and so relevant to how we can understand ourselves. And to help us know these, I haven't been an expert about that, I'm still not, but at least I'm a bit more familiar than I, I, I had been. So I feel capable of talking with our guest, <laughs> <laughs> who is a real expert about the yugas. And, um, and so let's talk with uh, a man who has been on Energy Steel a number of times before, Jason Gregory. Jason, welcome to, welcome back to Energy Steel. Yeah, it's great to be back on, Peter. It's always a pleasure to see you. Always, uh, you're always happy and vibrant, so I love that. <laughs> well, I do my best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, the yugas. Most people have never heard of yugas. No. And, um, and they actually represent different periods of time, but not in a linear way so much as a meaning way. Mm. Right? Yeah. Really an it, understanding of consciousness. Yes, they're more, more about, we could say, ages of consciousness, right? They're, they're the cycles of consciousness is what we're talking about when we talk about the yugas. And, right. You know, for the listeners, they, they, you need to understand there's actually two systems of the yugas. So there's a there's a long count system of the yugas, which is uh, what Hindus would probably say is more of the traditional system. But then there's a more recent short count system, uh, which uh, has been around for a few hundred years, but some people believe it's been around longer, which became popular through a sage called uh, Sri Yukteswar. And so Sri Yukteswar, he's still using the ancient framework of the, the traditional system, but he's explaining it, uh, especially um, in relation to historical events, which, which kind of makes sense when you look, especially when you look at around from around 10,000 BCE until now, it kind of makes sense. But also in saying that the long count system can make sense too. It depends on who you're talking to a lot of uh, it. This is, we're talking about a very long count. Long count, yeah, that, that, that long count is so long. It's, um, so we have to think about a kalpa, and a kalpa is 4.32 billion years. So, and that's what they would call in Hinduism a day of Brahma. Now, Brahma being the, the creative principle of the universe, as opposed to um, Shiva and Vishnu, and Shiva being the destructive principle, Vishnu being the sustainer. And so, a, a a day of Brahma is 4.32 billion years, and a day and night of Brahma is uh, 8.64 billion years. So uh, they kind of they kind of talk about when, especially when they talk about 4.32 billion years, they're more so talking about the age of the Earth when they're talking about that that long count system. So okay, and so we are in a particular yuga as as the Earth. Yes, and yes, and is that if I'm from if I'm thinking correctly, is that the Kali Yuga? That's the Kali Yuga. Yes, okay. it's it's we're in it's a four hundred thirty-two thousand year cycle. So that actually that Kali Yuga is believed to have begun at three thousand one hundred and two BCE. That that was the time of. I, I know that you're probably familiar with the Mahabharata, uh, Peter, but and your listeners is. That, that's the time of the Kurukshetra war in, in Northern India. And so that's the kind of like, if you read the Bhagavad Gita, for example, that's the, that war has, that has been mythologized, right? Where Krishna is guiding Arjuna in the battlefield. to, right, to follow famous. His, the famous, yeah, follow his dharma. And so th that story actually is when Krishna dies or, or leaves the world to the, to the heavenly abode of Vaikuntha, that is what uh, represents the beginning of the Kali Yuga. So it's believed, Hindu authorities believe that that begun 
and 3102 BCE. There's a bit of a dispute there between some scholars in India and around that they say uh, more probable is, is 1500 BCE. But I mean, if you look at the Puranas, the actual text it, that it came from, which was uh, written down by uh, uh, the sage Vyasa, it, it's stating like around 3102 BC was the, the time of the end of the Dwapara Yuga and the beginning of the, the Kali Yuga. Okay, so, but the Kali Yuga also, since it's billions of years long in the long count, yeah. it's, it, it really should represent the entire uh, history of our planet, let alone yeah. just some thousands of years ago. So there's also a short count <laughs> yeah, of yeah. Yugas. And well, to clar well, also to clarify, sorry, Peter, to clarify, it's, it's 432,000 years, the, the, the Kali Yuga, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, I mean, come on, it's still a long time, right? <laughs> but it's it's not as long as uh, Satya Yuga, which is the, the age of, the spiritual age of the age of truth, which is, uh, it's around uh, uh, 1,728,000 years, I think something along those lines. So, so if we look at that, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but if you look at that, we are only a few, according to the long count system, we're only a, a few thousand years into a 432,000 year cycle. So. All right, now let's let's talk about what these yugas mean because, uh, you know, we can give them names, but it means nothing uh, mm. by themselves because there are four yugas. Mm. And and the Kali Yuga, you've, you've talked about two, I think at this point is, the Satya, no, three, Satya Yuga, Dvapara Yuga, mm -hmm. and, um, and the Kali, Kali Yuga, mm -hmm. and there's also a Tetra Yuga. Yeah. But there's actually um, a sequence to them because mm -hmm. the Satya Yuga is the golden age that, that we come from, mm -hmm. but, but we've deteriorated since then. <laughs> and we're not as good at that anymore. No. So, um, so the Satya Yuga is kind of where we want to return to, actually. We want to have this great golden age again, but it's really an ideal age. It's very hard, extremely hard to attain because there's, it's non-dual, it's not materialistic. Mm. And, yes. and so, um, so there are different gradations that we've lowered ourselves to, or that life has mm. lowered itself to. And so after the Satya came the Tetra Yuga, which is um, only three quarters of the power or the idealism of the Satya Yuga. That's right, yeah. And so that is where the, it's the start of materialism, uh, the start of, of, um, uh, of organized life, of empires, and um, where, where we're really more, have more desire, and uh, have to deal more with the forces of nature. Mm. And, and the forces of nature can be difficult. So the Tetra Yuga really introduces us to the complexities of the material world. Yes, 100%, 100%. That's, that's when actually the beginning of the, the, the dual state of consciousness begins to bear root in us like we have this sense of duality like you said from the satya yuga which is you know the golden age is you have a you know to use hindu terminology you you are completely connected to brahman so the the ultimate reality you know of, of existence and like this it's like that non-dual state of consciousness that you know we believe a sage or the, someone like the buddha had you know so but we, everyone was like that, you know, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it, it, and it's interesting because you also teach about Taoism mm. and the idealism that Taoism teaches, which mm. I think can only really take place in a, a Satya Yuga environment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. But the thing is that as we go down through to the Treta Yuga, then you have the, the, the beginning, like you said, like, like you were mentioning, the, the beginning of... Um, particular weather patterns, the, be, the beginning of um, empires and, and so forth and so on. So then that contributes more to 
you know, a, a dualistic state of consciousness. Right. And, well, we have to fight for our survival more than we did in an ideal state. Exactly. And that's where we identify more as a individual, that, that beginning stage of um, that we, we have lost connection with nature, we've lost connection with each other, and we're beginning to uh, flower as a, not flower, but we're, we, I could also <laughs> almost say degrade as an yes. individual, you know. So here we are in this material nature of, of Earth, and, um, and then we have to lower ourselves even more into the Devarpara Yuga, which is still only half of Satya of the of the Golden Age. It's not less than half, because mm -hmm. you can get lower than that to the Kali Yuga, and and so um, the, so we can also still aspire to Vapara Yuga, because that has to do with still holding on to truthfulness and compassion, mm -hmm. and um, and and can hold more of the, of the knowledge of, Bra of Brahman um, still. And, yeah, yeah. And, and so there's hope there. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, the whole, I mentioned Vyasa before, the, the whole reason they believe, Hindus believe that someone like Vyasa comes about every, at the end of every Dwapara Yuga is because he still has a connection to the Satcha Yuga. He's still, you know, an enlightened sage, the teacher of the teacher who comes along yes. during Vapara Yuga can be uh, an avatar, right? An avatar, yes, exactly. And and so he his role is to leave behind texts that will help us, um, you know, have a sense of spirituality and a sense of remembering Brahman in in the Kali Yuga. So right. yes, um, so so and and you mentioned avatars, and there's like being you know, if we look at Vaishnavism, so the, the worship of Shiva in, in Hinduism, there's been nine avatars before, and they believe that the tenth avatar of Kalki will come along at the end of the the Kali Yuga, if if we accept the long count system, that is. So right. obviously in so, the short in the short in the short count system we're not in the Kali Yuga. Right, but that's also appreciating uh, the leadership of you know of a guru type person. Exactly. And, you know, many of us question authority nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> so it's well, very hard for an avatar to show up and, and uh, <laughs> say, sure, we believe you. <laughs> well, well, according to them, it won't, uh, Kalki won't turn up until towards the end of the 432,000 year cycle. So it's oh. not going to be any time soon. Okay. But, but if we, it, it, you raise a good point, Peter, because, you know, a part of especially Eastern spiritual, spirituality, a part of the maturity is, is deference, right? Is, is kind of giving your power away in some sense to someone not more knowledgeable than you to, to guide your path. Well, like, it's humility. And it's humility. And there are people who are wiser, but mm -hmm. we have to learn who to trust. Well, that's true too. That's true too. But you have to also allow that to happen too. Mm -hmm. Like you have to allow the trust, you know, obviously. Yeah, but a lot of gurus have been disappointed. Well, that is true too. That is true. Yeah. But in saying that, there's there's been a highlight on the minority of gurus who have been promiscuous and so forth and so on. When you go to India, there's a bunch of gurus who you, you've never heard of, you know, on, on a local level. And like, for example, when you live in India, there's, you might go to a small community and in that small community, they have a guru. So it's kind of, I mean, we wouldn't think of it because we see like, the gurus on YouTube and so forth and so on, but there's actually like local, you know, communal gurus who who the community, you know, respect and so forth and so on. And and, and I agree with you. You have to be wary of who you trust, particular you know, particularly in this age because there's so many charlatans. But that's come along through turning spirituality into commodity, right? So you have to be very careful. And I'd say, like from for myself, from living in India. Go into the go into the Himalayas or somewhere like that, and find a guru who doesn't have many followers around them. You know, the Himalayas. Does, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go there and and go to the ones that don't have that many people around them, and 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 it's a it's a very different uh, transmission of of the knowledge. It's not like on a widespread 
scale. You know, like it's not like one guy standing up on the yeah, podium. So these might be enlightened people and they each have a different understanding of enlightenment. Yeah, of course, of course. And but they just don't have a microphone, right? They're not <laughs> they're not like you and I. They're, they they don't have a microphone and, and they're just yeah, they're not that well known. But but in saying that, they're still you know, what I would say for Westerners is that you still need to have that bit of humility. You know what I mean? Like even if the teacher, say if you find out the teacher is an idiot or, or just a charlatan, just move away. Just, you know, you right. sometimes, sometimes we fall for certain traps. I've fallen for those traps in the past too, you know, sure. but in standing, uh, in, in talking about that avatar lineage, like of Vishnu, you know, a lot of people probably don't know, but Hindus believe the last three avatars were um, Buddha, Krishna, Rama. So most people are probably familiar with with okay. those three. I mean, Hindus kind of claim Buddha, <laughs> but um, Buddhists probably would disagree with that. But you know, that that's that's the knowledge. You know, so. In my last lifetime, I was in India, yeah. and I was a disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You were you were living in Calcutta. <laughs> my name was Kamal Gangali in that life. Kamal Gangali. Yeah, that was have you name. have you searched have you searched the I, name? I, I I found that out first I was told that by an Indian guru mm -hmm. saw that in me. And mm -hmm. then I did a, a hypnotic regression back in between lifetime, actually back to my last lifetime, and I got to see myself mm -hmm. in that life. And um I was, I, I was a good looking guy. <laughs> it was nice. But I mean, there are stories about that that are uh, fascinating to me. Yes. And I really enjoy that I had that opportunity to learn that about myself. And yes. so, um, so I, I appreciate that we can um, appreciate people of wisdom and authenticity. And that's great. Of course, yeah, of course, yeah. Keep a discerning eye, but like also. You know, like um, a lot of people, again, like in the modern world, will uh, superimpose their troubles with uh, politicians or, or any other sort of authority figure onto, onto gurus, right? So we see this a lot, in, especially in the West. So everyone's, everyone's skeptical of everyone in yeah, the that's, West. That's you know what I mean? Like it's, it, can be, it can be to our detriment too, you know? Sure. No, I think it is. So... Well, we, but, but in the West, there are so many people we need to be skeptical of. And as a matter of fact, understand that they are not in our favor. <laughs> no, well, that's true. That's true. But like, like, I, like I said, like they usually are the politicians and the leaders right. and the ones who are. Or corporate, know, corporate leaders. Corporate leaders. And, and, and I would say that, of course, you should be skeptical of, right. of them, you know. So. Right. so so let's look at, at the Dvarpara Yuga is, is half of Satya, half of idealism. And then we come down to Kali Yuga, which is only a quarter of Satya. And so <laughs> that's where materialism gets out of hand or can get out of hand. Yeah. And that's it's kind of where we're at, I think, in this world where... Um, it's we're as as you say, and there's a it's actually a, a wonderful uh, recording that you did about this. And in that, you say that you know in Kali Yuga we become entangled with the external world, and and that's where we find hedonism and egotism, and and we get really caught up in holding matter as everything, having fear of death, having um, not not uh, experiencing our spirituality. And because of that, we give too much power to technology. And, and, and you even talk about transhumanism where we, we could be overtaken by artificial intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. That, that, that would be one of the, I guess, that, that would be the grossest form of materialism in the Kali Yuga, right? It would be because our mind is so entangled with materialism, with our identification and with everything else, what, what would be the height of uh, the grossest form of that would be, well, I want to become something else that is, 
immortal, maybe yeah. immortal, you know, it depends on when the universe evaporates and all those robots will, will too. But um, that that is kind of the height of, I would say, of our materialistic leanings, right? Like I want to live... I want to live forever. I don't want to experience death. But it, but it experiences the, the, the mind in our brains as everything, not our consciousness as everything. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the difference. Because if we know that consciousness is everything and never dies, mm. our bodies can die, but our... our consciousness can't die, yeah. Right. Never dies. But, right. I, I, but, but Peter, not many people have your, <laughs> your insight. You know, they... That's why they are leaning into um, transhumanism and artificial intelligence. And it's not that it's just appealing according to the Kali Yuga. It's that fear of death and that, and that, uh, that the material world is the only thing which is driving a lot of those, uh, a lot of that curiosity. Right. And so that's a Kali Yuga. But now apparently the Dvapara Yuga is ascending. So mm. there's hope. <laughs> there's hope, yes. Well, that's the short count system here. Yeah? That's Sri Yukteswar's system. So according to the short count system, which is based on a 24,000 year cycle of a binary star system. So the belief that there's two stars, like our sun and, and another and a dual sun, and they're in this binary star system. Obviously, you, because it's so vast, according to Sri Yukteswar, that you probably wouldn't see the other sun because the, the, the systems are so huge, you know what I mean? So, well, we don't know the reality of it other than it's, it's an interesting philosophy. Exactly, exactly. That's, yeah, that's a good point. And so when you look at that, and also he links this with the, the Zodiac as well, so um, where you have the, uh, the, I think it was the, the beginning, the, the beginning of the Kali Yuga and the short count system was 500 B, uh, 500 CE, and the end of it was uh, 17. Uh, no, sorry, I think it was 18. Uh, seven, no, sorry, 17, eight, 17 CE, 1700 CE, 17 CE. Okay. And so, um, and look, when he looks, when he, uh, why? He, well, let's say he picked those dates, right? Why he focused on those dates was because the vernal equinox uh, of Aries was in a particular uh, position. And, and, and likewise, at the end of at the 1700, uh, it was in a particular, the, uh, the vernal equinox, Libra was in a particular position. But interestingly enough, that also corresponds to the Mayan calendar. Yeah, it does. Yes, exactly. And that, that was why um, actually, Around 2012, there was a, there was a few, maybe about four or five documentaries about the relationship between the Yugas and the Mayan calendar. So, and oh, um, which was very interesting. And actually, even uh, John Major Jenkins, who was a you know a, a great scholar about the Mayan calendar, he spoke a lot about the relationship between the 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 Yukteswa version of the Yugas and and the Mayan calendar. So. Yeah, it does, it does. It does. It does tie in. So, sorry, 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 Peter. But when when you look at that, that that was the Kali Yuga. So, five hundred, uh, specifically four hundred ninety nine CE to seventeen hundred ninety nine. No, no, sixteen hundred and ninety nine CE. So, well, it was a few hundred years ago. <laughs> exactly. So, so now, so now we are in. According to Sri Yukteswar, we're in. The, the ascending cycle of the Dupara Yuga. So. And that's wonderful. So, so it's ascending to becoming a, a, a closer uh, consciousness to Satya, which is the golden age. So we exactly. are reaching up rather than falling down. And that, yes. that's what I think is really important because we're getting near the end of the show. And it's really important to, for people to understand that we are coming into a new age of of enlightenment really mm -hmm. that uh, we haven't been in in a long time and and so we need to that gives us hope for the future <laughs> and we don't it know how long been. it's going to take for for the foothold to be strong enough but we hope soon um, well, one of the, well one of the hallmarks of the Dupara Yuga is the understanding that we come well we come to the understanding that everything is energy and everything is consciousness 
And so we, we start to step away from everything is matter. You know, we are bound by materialism. That's the hallmark of Tupara Yuga. And that understanding only gets deeper and deeper as we, as we move into Treta right. Yuga. And that's what the Mayans have said. We're in a period now going into what they call night, which is inner, yes. inner space, rather than yes. outer space, which is superficial stuff. Yes. So, uh, this we, is could talk, we could talk about it for, forever. This yes, is. I know. I love talking with you. So, uh, and there is a documentary you made about this. Can you yeah. tell people about that? Yeah, it's, it's called The Yugas, The Great Time Cycles of the Universe. So you can find that for free on YouTube. It's on there, or you can go to my website, jasongregory.org. But yeah, most of, oh, well, basically all of my work's for free on YouTube. So, yeah. I hope, and it's not that long a documentary, too. It's about 35 minutes. So. And there's also a, a new book that I'm hoping to interview you about soon called yes. um, in, in, Intuition. Intuition. Emotional, in, emotional Intuition for Emotional Intuition, right. Yeah. And I'm excited about that. I, I, I can't wait to get into it. Um, yes. and talk with you about it. Um, emotional intuition. And Jason Gregory, and, and, and um, so they can go to YouTube and put your name yeah. in. Yep, type it in and you'll find my YouTube channels that will probably be the first thing to come up. And then, yeah, I, I've got everything organized on my YouTube channel so they can find the documentary easy. Or just, or just type in the Yugas and my name and it'll come up. Okay. And, yeah. and there's a website uh, yeah, jasongregory.org. So, oh, that's, yeah, my name. Oh, simple. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, Jason, it's so wonderful to talk with you. Uh, yeah. And I, I think this is very helpful for all of us is to um, understand that there are all these systems out there that are giving us hope for a better world. Exactly. <laughs> and and, and, and we, we can live in that better world too, you know, if we understand these systems and begin to understand ourselves as well. Right, it's really appreciating the, the consciousness that we're in more and more. Yes. Yeah, wonderful. Definitely. So thanks so much for being on Energy Stu, Jason. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you, Peter. And this is Peter Roth, your host of Energy Stew at prn.fm. I can be reached at peter at heartriver, H-E-A-R-T, river.org. I'd love to hear from you and thanks so much for listening.